Hi guys, it's Master Coach Tony Morgan and we're going to continue our series on questions and answers on this back to Geotech using our new concept on the fault analysis quant quadrant. So today's quadrant we're going to be looking at the ignition sequence and ignition faults. So you're going to hear questions being asked by Tom who's going to be doing these videos and we'll see what we come up with with these questions. Alright Tom, fire away. Yeah, Tony, I'm looking at the um, the possible, there's quite a few um, sources here where you've got problems with ignition that can be caused. I'm just looking to, to get a few questions answered. Um, first one being the condensate. Um, are there more than one ways of having issues with um, fault codes in the condensate, i.e. through frozen pipes or blockages? Or Right, so, okay, so there's a condense trap there. So... Like you said, if it was blocked from outside, what we could do is obviously inspect outside, see if it's going outside. The other area you can look at, if we go underneath the bottom here, um, get a bucket under here, and then you can undo this part here like that. And then obviously you'd have a bucket below, and then if that loads of water poured out, it'll come in a sec. So if those water poured out there, you'd hear it pouring out. And then, obviously, that could be the blockage. It could be blocked through this. That could be all bunged up. So you'd have to get that eliminated first. And then try it again. The classic sort of example of that, it's blocked if you've got that washing machine, wishy-wash type of situation. So what we'll do, we'll look inside here and um, I'll show you some more stuff on the ignition. So is there any other questions you want to ask? Yeah, Tony, um, next question would be um, the gas valve on this geotech. Uh, I take it the, um, it, it could be either faulty through faulty solenoids or um, possibly maybe um, on the intake there where it might be blocked, some debris in there. Can you just maybe explain um, what the main part of the problems are on this particular boiler? Well, um, you've got maybe three things. Two of them we just said, and the third one I'll, I'll start with that one. See this pipe here? Well, this is from the suction side of the fan. So if that was detached off from there, like that, then the gas valve theoretically wouldn't open because there's no negative pressure being exerted onto the zero governor. And that's what basically makes the gas get drawn up into the fan. So this tube is essential. It needs to be connected. So if it's not, the gas valve theoretically won't open. So, so can, can them tubes actually get blocked in any way at all? Not really. Um, very, very highly unlikely. But as I said, it's mainly it's been detached, like it could be kinked. So that could cause the same problem if it's been kinked in any way like that. Then that can give you the same problem. It can't suck down here. And then the other reasons, like you said, um, solenoid could have gone. So you've got two situations there. Is power going to it? So you need to check if you're getting power going to the gas valve solenoid from the board. So you check on here and then you're looking at gas supply. Could be up, basically not on. So you need to make sure you've got gas. Check the standing pressure here. See then basically if it goes to fire up, do you get a pressure drop? So that can tell you if the gas valve's actually opened. So on, on ignition, so if you've got standing pressure of 25 millibar, then it, you, know, you want it to drop maybe to 20, something like that. If it stays still, that means the gas valve is definitely opened. So that's a, a little point for you there. And obviously, if there's no gas, then no burning. And then blockages, there could be gas there, power could be there. You'd have to take the gas valve out to see if anything's gone inside there, any particles in the bottom of the gas valve. So that's the areas that you'd be looking at. Right, well, we're talking about gas, gas supply. I take it you could, it could even be 
there's nothing wrong with the boiler. It might actually be the gas meter that's causing the problem. That's it, yeah. Another thing what you can get is, again, with your new gauge here, the burner comes on, so your standing pressures are great. The burner comes on, then the pressure drops right down to zero on your U-gauge. When that happens, it's usually the gas meter governor has gone. Right, so any more questions you'd like to ask? Yeah, Tony, we're still on the gas side. You obviously, you've looked at all your stuff, your gas valve, everything seems okay. Um, my next protocol would probably be maybe I'll have a look at the injector to maybe see if that's blocked. Is that something that can cause? Well, on this particular boiler, there is um, not really an injector, but it's got like a restrictor. Um, inside here, right there, these are like, a, it's like a throttle or a cotton injector because it does narrow down. Now, that would stop it either mixing or operating properly. So inside there, if you checked anything else, I think you'd probably be getting emissions all wrong if that was really causing a problem. Right. I can't give you the telltale sign what it would cause if it was blocked, if it would not ignite, probably won't ignite, or probably burn bad. But there's an injector in there. Other than that, there's no injector in the burner. And I don't think there's no any restriction or injectors. So as I said, the boilers are different, they work differently. But using the fault analysis quadrant, we're just covering all areas using that framework. Right, so anything else you'd like to ask? Yeah, the next the next question would be the um, looking at the spark electrode. Um, now, is there any way that I can take this out and test it to see one if it's sparking, or two if it maybe like the, the, the spark gap is um, either too small or too large that that could be causing the problem? Well, yeah, you can take that out. Um, you got two screws there, Allen keys. Um, bolt to remove there and then you can see the gap you can also take it out and then see if it's sparking you can put it at the side like this run the boiler and see if you do get a spark coming from the spark generator and then yeah you can check the gap to see if it's too great or small because of it anything like that is not going to be you're not going to get a good spark on the um, spark electrode Okay, anything else you want to ask on about electrode? Yeah, the electrode, you said if I, if I take that out, you can you can test it to see if it's actually sparking. But obviously there's a lot of voltage going through there, so is there any means of um, trying to get that safe or covered up to, um, in any way that well, I would in danger? Mm, okay, what I'd normally do is just once you take it out, you've got the lead on connected and then have it to the side, just, just maybe an inch or so not even that actually, away from this and it'll jump across. Right. So it won't do nothing, it won't hurt you. Obviously you're not gonna really touch it. So just bend it so it's just near to the, this case in here and it'll jump across and then you'll see if you've got a good spark. The spark will last maybe about three seconds and that's it. Right, okay. So if it's not sparking, and they'll probably be looking next door upstairs there at that spark generator to see if, if that's maybe causing the problem. Yeah, you're going to check then to see if you're getting power to it. So what we'd do, we'd obviously check power, use your multimeter, see if you're getting power up to the spark generator. If you wasn't, again, you'd be looking at your PCB down there. That's where the power comes from to see if you're getting power there or not. Right, so anything else? Yeah, Tony, the, the ignition lead, I mean, um, what, what role does that play in all this here? Well, this is it here. So, obviously, if it was broke, that's something what obviously is going to, that's going to transfer the power, the spark down the lead to here. So, obviously, you got to make sure that's sound. And then, obviously, if it's not, you could do a continuity check, I suppose. So, I'll check both sides through continuity, make sure that's okay. And then 
nine times out of ten, if it would be, and if it wasn't, then that's going to stop it from sparking as well. Okay, anything else? Yeah, um, another question, the, the flame sensing device, um, could, can that in a way cause a fault um, to, to stop the bottom from working? It would, it would indeed. Now, I'll just tell viewers, um, our lead between here and here is missing, but for the sense of this video, we can explain anyway. So, <clears throat> yeah, the flame sensing electrodes here, so basically, if that was like um, insulated through deposits on it, and it was basically you'd have to clean it because it couldn't detect the flame proper, and then you get a fault code which would display on the front here, <coughs> just like actually the gas valve fault. So the one three three E one three three fault. This is lots of different things. So you've got the um, block condense, spark electrode, gas valve, flame sensing, all to do with this code. It's shown here actually. It says gas supply fault, but all that is comes under that bracket. So the flame sensing, basically, as I said, detects the flame. So basically, the burner will come on. We'll look at the front here again. The burn light will come on. So if that came on and then went off after about 30 seconds, you know that it's not detecting the flame properly. Either the burner's not burning correctly or the flame sensing electrode is not detecting that flame because that should stay on solid all the time. So if it goes on and goes back off, does that repeatedly, this is where you're going to be looking at. So you take that out, check the gap, see if it's not distorted, see if it's not pitted, as I said, then you clean it with a file if necessary. Okay, thanks for that one. Another question, actually inside the burner itself, um, can that cause anything that's going to shut it down? And... Well, what can happen, the burn itself on these are pretty good they don't really give much problems. But what can give a problem is, going back to the gas valve, the settings of the gas valve could be incorrect. So that means you'd have to check the emissions to see if they're correct. Now this boiler, um, the maximum CO2 is 8.7 and then 8.4 on minimum. So that's around about what it's supposed to be. So you check them values that they're correct. If they're out, then you're going to get this problem, as I said earlier, about the burner coming on and going off. So that's to do with your burner type of situation. Okay. Good. Um, another question. The, um, the, the, the flu, uh, is it like a um, sensor on there that can maybe be faulted it causes flu problems or yeah well on this boiler if you look closer there you got that's the flu sensor there so that'll give a fault code basically if there's a fault fault on the flu sensor so basically if the flu temperature was too hot then that would be activated or they can go faulty and nine times out of ten they usually go faulty and we'll throw up a fault I don't think it shows it on there on this particular fault code. Oh yeah, it does. Flew over it there. Yeah, E130. So um, yeah, that would be to do with your flu. Obviously, the other thing you need to check is your flu integrity test and make sure it's not mixing. That means the seals are okay in the flu. Right. So let's move on. Anything else you want to discuss? Yeah, Tony, the, the fan itself, um, what sort of faults can that kick up um, to shut down your, your boiler? Right, well, for the ignition side of things, obviously the fan is very, very important. It does a lot of things. So the fan basically is going to, as I said earlier, it's going to suck the gas through the gas valve up into the fan and mix, and then with the air and gas mixture 
that's going to be them forced up to the burner. So if the fan doesn't turn, obviously none of these things are going to happen. You're going to get an error code if the fan doesn't work on the front of the boiler. Look in here, it's E160 if the fan fails. Normally you're going to hear the fan actually make a noise, you're going to hear it rotating. So if it's dead, the fan's not turning. So you've got, let's have a look here, if you go and start back at the beginning, you've demand lights on, so the heating lights on here, pumps running, but no fan. Now, looking at the heating, if you were on heating side of things, then you can check if you missed and make sure that's okay. Or you can just wait for a few, maybe a minute, and see if you get that error code coming on. So that's usually the best thing to do. Just wait for a bit, see what happens. If the error code comes on, as I just said, it's the fan. Now, there's another thing. To, it could be the PCB. So you have to carry out a test, really, between the fan and the PCB. So here, you got to check here. But on the PCB itself, you can to check there as well. I've done another video how to check that. So you can look at that video, how to test between the fan and the PCB on that code, on that E160 code. Right, so hopefully that was good for you about the fan. Anything else you'd like to ask? Yeah, just while we're continuing on here, last question would be the ignition PCB, um, what sort of... Um, faults with that kick up? Well, as I just said about testing between the fan and the PCB, that's going to be the code you're going to get. So either one of them failures, a PCB failing or the fan failing, will give you the same error code. You just got to count the test to find out which one it is. But nine times out of ten, it is the fan. But if not, it will be the PCB causing the problem. Okay, is that pretty much it, Tony, with the um, PCB? Any other issues that... Yeah, I think that's about it, really. Have you, you finished with your questions? Are yeah, you yeah, we're all happy, good. We're happy with that. Yeah. Happy with that, yeah. Okay, then, that's going to be on this video on this quadrant. So that was to do with ignition faults. So hopefully that was educational for you guys. Just go over it again if you're not sure. Now, this type of questions and answers hopefully will be a great way for you guys to learn. And using the fault analysis quadrant is also a great idea. Once you memorize what that is, you can actually get a free copy of my little audio, sorry, ebook on this subject. So watch out for that. So that's me in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you next one. Bye for now.